Hey Pirates, welcome to your base clinic episode. I'm doing this at a weird time because Kickside is about to change a lot of the base heating and base defense rules. So a lot of things I'm saying in this video might just not be the same after those changes and I might have to do a whole update on it. But for now, uh, I hope it helps you at least for the month of April 2020, maybe even into May for the next bounty. But what I, the reason I'm doing this is I'm seeing so many players that can't even scratch fleets of Warhounds, fleets of Trenchers, and are having a really frustrating time even doing like very, very basic defense. So my goal here, to be very clear, it's not to give you a magic solution, one size fits all, that's just going to kill everything and defeat everyone. It's just to bring those players that have fallen behind and can't even begin to defend themselves to a level where they stand a chance. So I hope you will stand a chance after you watch this video and apply some of the ideas. I'm going to share some useful turrets, how to set them up, how to position them, good combos like different turrets that work well together with some guard ships and whatnot, how you use some tactical modules to complement that, and, and, and so at least you're going to hurt those top fleets. If not completely defeat them, at least hurt them. Uh, things I will not give you in this video, uh, a complete base layout for you to just copy. Because I want people who, watching, who are watching this to think, to learn and be able to do it themselves as the game changes, as the game evolves. evolves. Um, I'm not going to be giving you complete chip builds for defense. I'm going to tell you kind of what ships you should be using, but the build's up to you. And, you know, I'm not going to do a complete breakdown of all turrets. So some, some basics I'll be mentioning, but you, you kind of got to see what specials to use, especially because those specials will also be evolving over time. Basic rule number one, uh, basilisks in the game have a very, very long range. And I see tons of bases that can be easily hit from the outside. You don't even have to walk in. So I don't care if your base entrance, it's on the left, on the top, at, you know, at the bottom, on the right. The basic rule, the simple one to keep in mind, is including the land tiles here. You got to be able to count 10 squares. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 until you get to the island. Anything less than that or even 9.5. So let's say you put land in here, you got to put some walls first or mountains. Then you can put your buildings because if the buildings are at less than 10 tiles or nine and a half from the border, basilisks can and will hit you. So they can get your outpost, they can get your guards, you know, without even going in and taking damage. So keep that in mind. And of course, when you're doing your base, you're going to have to close three of these little holes here and just leave one open at the top, at the bottom, whatever, whichever side you like. So as an example, right, this one here has 10, 10 tiles here, including the first land, 10 here, 10 here. And here there's more than 10 at the entrance side because this, these two tiles here are the safe area for you to put guard ships that likely will not be sniped from the outside here. Attackers will have to at least move a little bit in before they can start firing at your guards. And what I'm doing here for this exercise is I close three sides. So I'm going to work with the right side entrance. And this layout here is, is not battle proven per se. It's just an example and I'm going to use it as a, a foundation to show you where to put the turrets and, and how to work with them together. The first uh, combo we're going to work with is the explosive combo. It's a short range setup and it's comprised of four components. One, thunderclap heavy rockets and they have this enhanced eruption pyre, I think is the name of the special, for a lot of reload. The ZU is also reload and this one is more splash. Okay, it uses a heavy transformer and we're going to use two or three of those. Then two or three Cerberus rockets, same specials with the attack AT transformer. And a warehouse with fuel, air munition, two tactical module 
and fire support two tactical module that and this warehouse should be somewhere that it covers these other turrets or most of them this combo it's greatly enhanced if you have one two even three howlers in your defense with death rattle rockets so four components if you line the four of them up it works great so let's see that in the base planner so as I was mentioning on the slide where there, you put some thunder claps across the channel, across the entrance, spread them out. Of course, there will be portals, like I put one portal here, but probably there would be another one here, another one here, or here on the side, up to you. Again, your layout doesn't have to be exactly this, but the whole point is distribute these thunder claps along the channel. They are, they are your short range welcome committee for two reasons. One, they will slow down your enemy. They have a slowdown effect that's very powerful. And if the attacker doesn't have very good resistance against slow tactical field and whatnot, it will take them forever, It'll stop them on their tracks here. The, the second reason is the thunderclaps. Every time they hit, they take away your attacker's explosive deflection. So with successive hits, they can take up to 64,000 explosive deflection away from your attacker. And the goal is then, that's why I have this coverage, you see? At the entrance, they'll be hitting. Of course, this one can and will be killed first. Then as they move in now, they're killing gates and whatnot, and this one is firing at them. And now the third one's firing at them. And they are being empowered a little bit by this warehouse here. As you can see, this warehouse covers two of the Thunderclaps and two Cerberus, and it has fuel ammunition and fire support. Helps on the reload, helps on the damage. The Cerberus, you can have two or three more towards the center. So by the time they start firing, your enemy will have lost some explosive deflection already. And finally, the Howlers. You can have one, two, three Howlers here and you can see their range or not the patrol ship weapon range you can see their ranges by the time the enemy gets here there will still be a portal here probably and other ships and so these howlers will do serious damage the servers will be doing serious damage and because your enemy will have their explosive deflections a, a, a lot weaker than when they started the journey in and by this point they'll have other stuff to worry about firing from behind hopefully from the central island but i like this combo it's very neat so a few thunderclaps a few servers a warehouse with fuel ammunition and fire support and one two three hours next up you let's look at something mid-range so we had the explosive combo that's all short range and high damage so next you want something to do mid-range and the best option is the tempest heavy launchers you're going to need heavy turrets for that. It does a good damage per projectile and depending on the setup you're going to have 830,000. Of course divided by four salvos. Still it's enough to overcome the, the deflection on most ships, on all ships I believe. Then you have uh, another option where you change one special and you get more raw damage. But the big prize you're after is not really this damage per projectile. You're after the shockwave. 3 million damage and that boom from the shockwave, if, if the attacker is coming at you with the, their ship stacked, the 3 million damage here will damage all of the ships that are in range of that shockwave. So it's a great tool. And to achieve more shockwaves, it's very important to have very high accuracy. And that's why I prefer that setup that does a little bit less damage but has the ZU for reload. Radiant Reserves should do the supercharge, so each hit counts as three towards the, sh the shockwave. And, and then you go for the high accuracy instead of the bigger damage with lower accuracy, because most enemies will have decent evade, so a lot of these hits will miss. But you get, you know, the basic uh, launcher has 70%, you add 120, you are at 190% accuracy. So let's say an enemy coming at 50% evade, you're still going to hit them 90% of times. And each hit counting as three, you, you're going to get a few shockwaves. And of course, ideally, if you can, 
you put your tempests near a warehouse or even the outpost with fire support too. And this will give you not only more raw damage, it doesn't affect the shockwave damage, but affects the direct damage, but it gets you an extra 10%. So you shockwave even faster. Let's see that on the base planner. So here we are, I I'm building on top of that initial uh, play area that I created here with uh, where the explosive turrets are in place, a couple guards are in place. This setup is not ideal for launchers because it, it doesn't really bring the attacker stores them. The ideal setup for launch is when you have some sort of gauntlet where you make the ships come in, sort of U-turn a little bit, come out here. So all the way in around the U and up before they can actually come to the central area, they would be hit by the launchers. It's perfect. This kind of channel that comes here and it just opens and the attacker can go to the right or go to the left. It's not great for launchers. Right, but, but here's just an idea. So you have your outpost. The outpost has two important things. That overloaded reload that's going to cause uh, every minute this, this terrorist to fire triple solvo. So you shockwave a lot faster. It has the ion storm accelerator. So stuff in this area cannot be pinched. So the attackers can just pinch your launchers. And as they get close, it won't work. And it has the fire support too, so you get extra damage and extra shockwaves. I'm, I'm putting three launchers here as an example, but for this to be effective, you should have about five or six of them, right? We already used three heavy turrets at the entrance. You can have up to 12, so that leaves you with nine left, and I would say four, five, or even six of them could be launchers, depending on your layout. A layout like this, as I said, less effective for, for the Tempests. Maybe you put four or five of them here. Uh, and then you got to point them the right way. So you see all of them have a common intersection in this kill zone in the channel. So remember when they're coming here, they're going to be overwhelmed by the, the guards, by these turrets, by whatever else you put behind here. And then you have all the launchers. You cut up. If you have five of them, you gotta point all five so they overlap in this area. And then if the attacker goes right, there's still maybe two hitting them here. If they go left, there's two or three hitting them here. So either way, you have uh, an amount of time to shockwave them. If you can have one of your guard ships with some sort of slow down field, like a lurker with engine disruptor, a high guard warden. You know, you keep them in in the area of the launchers for longer. Like I said, ideally, you close down this passage. You make a U, force a U here, move this to the center. But the challenge with that is it's hard to have enough land tiles to build a, a U-shaped channel without actually making the, the borders short and allowing for basilisks to hit. So it's a trade-off. So the final key component, actually I shouldn't say the final, the second last key component of this uh, overall strategy here for your base defense are the long range turrets that you put at the back close to the outpost. Uh, the, the two best options right now are the far sight cannon and you see two options, you can set them up here or the hellmouth thrower. The advantage of the Hellmouth Thrower is that when it fires, again, if, if the attacker is coming in with all the ships stacked, it will damage all of them at once because of the splash it has. So what you need to do there is maximize damage and projectile speed. So when, when it hits, if the attacker is moving, it's charging fast, it they're not going to be able to outrun the splash effect. The far sight has a, a longer range. And, and you gotta strive for accuracy. And that's why I'm showing two setups here. One setup has EM rails, which gives you 10% chance of a critical hit that doubles the damage. It is significant, but only 10%. It takes a while until you get one of these crit hits. So it, it's kind of rolling the dice. Either you can go for that, or you can go for extra 40% ballistic accuracy and which is going to be a lot better to hit uh, high evade enemies. Could mix them too. You could have two one way, one the other way, two and two, whatever. Uh, let's take a look at them in the base planner. 
As I mentioned, we have the outpost here and I put three far sites behind the outpost. If we look at one of them, you can see the minimum range. So once the ships get where the, the, the howlers are, the far sites won't be firing at them anymore. On the other hand, if you look at all of all three of them here, their ranges will extend all the way out there. You could even rotate them a little bit to the left, to the right, if you wanted. So as soon as enemies are in this red area, they'll be hit by the far sights. And because that outpost has the overloaded reload every minute, they'll fire three projectiles instead of one. It can be significant damage, especially if you can slow down the attacker progression. And that's exactly what the Thunderclaps will be doing, slowing them down a little bit. So the, you give the far sights more time to punish the attacker as they approach. If you notice now, I'm using three Thunderclaps. I said you can use two or three of them would make sense. I'm using three Tempests and I'm using three Farsights, which could be hell mounts, but I personally prefer the far side. That leaves you with three extra heavy turrets, which you could turn into more thunderclaps. You could turn into more tempests, which is the what most players do. They have, like I said, about five of them, and you could have a fourth far side cannon in here. The other thing I want to show not related to turrets, but with this kind of setup, you can put a bunch of walls in here and you could circle your outpost with mountains. I only have one, but players that already have two, three, four, the maximum you can have is six. You could literally put one, two, three here, four, five, six, and make it so Warhounds would not be able to fire at your outpost from any of this area here. You'd be forcing the Warhounds to either be on this side or up front here, right? At most, they would be at this angle over here. And of course, you can load this up with walls, but the whole idea is now you can focus some extra fire like scattergun turrets. We'll talk about them in a moment. You could put them all on one side and cover the other side with mountains. And the only weapon on the new Conquerors that would fire over the mountains are the missiles on the trenchers. Or if you look at the older Conquerors, mortars from the Basilisks or UAVs from the Subjugators, but ro uh, rockets from Howlers would not. Warhounds would not. The cannons from the trenchers would not. So putting mountains covering two sides is a good strategy. And there's enough that you can always cover two sides. You just can pick which ones you want. And the final piece, because you still have a lot of regular turrets, in total a base should have 24 turrets plus whatever you can put in the portals and the heavy turrets are only 12 of them at most. So for the regular turrets, there are some of them you can still use and kick ass with them. They help you a lot. For damage, the best option are the Draconian Scatterguns 2. You can see them here a whole bunch. One, two, three, four, five, six of them here. Uh, if you pick the right faction, you can give them a 20% damage bonus, which helps. Uh, and, and, and I just put two layouts in here. One of them, as I mentioned before, the, the one on the right. If you have a bunch of mountains, you could just put them all here and make an L with the mountain. So the outpost is protected. And then you would pretty much put as many scatterguns as you can on, on the open side. Right. And I, I left one empty space here to put an extra Tempest launcher. The other setup, if you don't have that many mountains, you have more space. You could even move this whole row of turrets a little bit further back. You could put a bunch of walls in here and, and then you could, you know, put some launchers up front and a bunch of scatter guns. Then you kind of got to spread them on both sides and even the back a little bit because attackers will, will circle around your outpost. And the heavy turrets are all directional. So the only thing you have that will fire in all directions are the scattered guns really that can do damage. Then you have a bunch of tactical turrets that you use for effects such as lowdown. The glacial turrets, the best one, the Wendigo, the cannibal Wendigo, the cryo adder. I put one cryo adder in here. It has a very good range and it slows down the attackers as well. 
Then around your guard ships, preferably, you put one or two of those anti-rocket turrets. Let's take a look at the base planner to see how that works. So here, as you can see, I put a few more guard ships. So there's a Gorgon. And the main goal of this Gorgon is to stop at least one ship so the Tempests and the Howlers can hit at them for longer. You could put another Gorgon on the other side here. I have a Houndmaster instead. And then at the back, there's a High Guard Warden, which can work as a countermeasure and it can have a resonance field. Uh, I, I've put links at the end of this video to another video that shows how to build a High Guard Warden and one that explains how the whole resonance thing works. I recommend you take a look at them to have a more in-depth understanding of this dynamic. Um, but as you can see, so in this case, I put one cryo adder and it covers a lot of the incoming channel here to slow them down. You could put a few Wendigos, Cannibal Wendigos. I have a glacial turret here. It also has a decent range and throws a lot of ice patches. Then I have one anti-rocket turret here covering some of the guards and I have another one here, oops, here covering some more guards. So that, that gives you sort of a coverage. Uh, in my case for now, instead of having more launchers, I have some decimator cannons that I put way up here, kind of as part of my bubble pad. I could put some warehouses and other stuff in here as well. But the bubble pad will go away once Kickside changes the rules of engagement. So then definitely I can move those turrets to the back and use them for more useful stuff. And as I mentioned, now at this point, all you got to do is put a portal here or here, put a portal here and put walls, whatever you see fit. Finish your layout, improve this channel. Like I said, this is not an ideal channel. I'm just using it to illustrate the dynamic of the turrets and the dynamic of the guard and where you can put mountains and walls and stuff like that and use your outpost in, in your favor to make your turrets better. So finally, remember to watch this video about how to build a high guard warden, this other video about how resonance works to make your guard better and subscribe to my channel. Once you subscribe, click on the buzzer to get notifications when I release new videos. I really appreciate everyone's support when you watch my videos and you're sharing your alliances. The, the goal here again is to just make it better for everyone so everyone can have fun playing the game we all love to hate. See you next time, parts.